What's going on, guys? Let me gather my thoughts. Because I'm about to talk to you guys for a second here. Um, and my hope for this, for this video is that it goes viral. This is not something that I usually do on my channel. Of course, you guys know that. It's mainly a reaction channel. Um, you know, TV shows, anime, what have you. But Call of Duty is something that is near and dear to my heart. And I have to make this video to Activision or somebody, Treyarch, Infinity Ward. I want somebody from their studios to see this, to see this video because I want them to understand how I feel. I don't want to say the community because I'm a longtime fan of this franchise and I'm going to explain to you guys what this series means to me as an individual. Um, and I know after I explain, I know probably some people are going to say, well, it means so much more to me, blah, blah, all this other stuff, right? Which I can't argue. <clears throat> I'm not going to argue it. But I'm going to try to remain as objective as possible in this situation because there's a lot of, there's a lot of blowback. There's a lot of blowback. We have killed we have said a lot of things to these people over the years, myself included, you know, over when I was doing, when I had a gaming channel and all I did was upload Call of Duty videos with commentary. And I've expressed my feelings explicitly about the direction where the franchise was going, you know, micro microtransactions, all of that stuff, right? I have played this franchise from the very beginning. The very beginning has meant something really and truly. I mean, there's two franchises in gaming history that means that it's very dear to my heart and what I grew up with and it is Call of Duty and God of War. God of War fortunately has never disappointed me. I've played every single God of War, even the ones on PSP. I played all of them. And I mean, you guys know what happened last year. I don't have to get into that. I don't have to get into that game of the year stuff. We don't have to get into that. We know what happened. Okay, now, everything started to take a different turn with Call of Duty when Advanced Warfare came out and the pay to win start, the pay to win situation started with that game, the pay to win, the microtransactions, the supply drops, and everything just went out of whack after that and they've been trying to patch it up and and also still have microtransactions in the game supply drops what have you they've tried i'll give you guys that you have tried your hardest to maintain a business model along with trying to satisfy the community and i see you guys trying and that's why i'm saying i'm trying to be as objective as possible during this talk with you guys during this talk i'm talking to you like i'm sitting in one of your board meetings right now because i feel like i'm invested in this series in this wonderful video game that you have created and messed up right you messed it up and i'm hoping 
and I know this may not be, and I know this is kind of, I don't know if you want to say it's this, this is late or whatever the situation is, but it's just something that really got to me t um, today. And I just felt like I needed to make a video about it because when I thought, when I think about it, me and Call of Duty is coming a long way back. And I know I'm not the only one. I know. And I'm not going to get into the other th these other situations when you're talking about the Call of Duty influencers. Um, I don't want to I don't want to name names because these guys are guys that I've followed on Call of Duty. They're the, they're the reason why I even tried to have a gaming channel on YouTube because I've been watching them. I mean, we're coming back from the days of when Call of Duty, when, when people like Chris Smooth, that's only does NBA 2K now, was doing Call of Duty videos. I'm talking about people like X-Jaws. Right? Right? And then here comes the Drifters. You know what I'm saying? Drifter. Chaos X Silencer. These are legendary commentators on YouTube. When it comes on to Call of Duty. But we are, they still get flown out to go see the new game. And I have nothing against that. In my opinion, in some ways they really don't deserve. Because they have, they have not really trusted the franchise to come back around. They show up, then they play the game for two months. And they don't upload, they only, up, they only upload, upload Call of Duty videos. Right? They only upload Call of Duty videos when when new content come out. That's the only time you see them post Call of Duty videos. Otherwise, they're playing other games. And I have no issue with them broadening their channel, doing other things for their channel because their channel had to grow. That's how they live. Their YouTube channel is their life and their sponsors. It's okay. I get it. I get it. There's a reason why I respect people like Elite Shot. I know you guys probably know about Elite Shot. And a lot a lot of people in the Call of Duty Call of Duty community, they don't like Elite Shot. A lot of people look down on him. And that's one of my favorite Call of Duty YouTubers. Cause guess what? No matter what is happening with Call of Duty, that guy is like he's like the champion. He's like the champion for Call of Duty on YouTube. He sticks with the franchise so vigorously. It's like, it's like he shares the same type of love that I have for the franchise. You get what I'm saying? Because no matter what, he'll never talk bad about the series. No, ma no matter what. He's a Call of Duty fanboy. That's what he calls himself. So no matter what it is, he's like, enjoy it for what it is. Enjoy it for what it is. And I've had my issues with Call of Duty over the years. Sometimes I feel like putting it down. But for some reason, I just keep picking it back up. Man, if you want to call it an addiction, call it an, an addiction. I don't care. But all I'm saying is not to show hate to those people because I don't hate them. As I said, I understand why they don't. They've explained why they don't upload Call of Duty videos anymore. You know what I mean? They've explained it. And understandably so. But I just feel like that privilege should go to people who are a little bit more stick with it, if you know what I mean. I don't know why somebody's trying to call me right now. I'm not about to answer the phone. But... What I'm trying to say is, as I soon get back to my main point, if you guys don't want to see this video, you can click off. You can click off now because it's going to take me a while to explain and to get to what I want because I want to make sure I get all the thoughts out of my mind in this video. So if you're not ready for a long video, click off right now. Go watch somebody else. Go watch something else because I have a long explanation to explain this video is going to be at least 20 minutes so my thing with this with this 
as I've said before, the franchise, now that we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare, the reboot, coming back October 25th, right? My thing with this whole situation where I, I don't, I, I, I'm not going to touch on the subject of the controversy yet. I want to explain to you guys why I love this franchise so much. I was playing Call of Duty before I own a console. Call of Duty was the first video game I played on a new generation. Because in my, in my opinion... Gaming, when we started to get HD graphics gaming with the PS3, you know, PS3, Xbox 360, and we started to get HD quality gaming. That's what I'm, that's where I'm going to take, I don't want to take you all the way back to PS2, you know what I'm saying, GameCube, th those those days, PS1, whatever the situation. I don't want to take you all the way back then. Let's start at a PS3. I never owned a PS3 when I started playing Call of Duty, right? I was going to a friend's house to play Modern Warfare 4. That's how much I love the franchise because I was like, oh, it's different now. Because it's on the PS3. I'm down. I was going to a friend's house to go play this game. I got a, my PS3. I got my PS3. When Modern Warfare 2 came out. Right? That's when I got my PS3. Good times. Very good times. And, you know, as I'm sitting here just remembering those days, man, of just every day I got up, I just wanted to play. And the thing about it, too, at that point, when I got my PS3, I was a newlywed. I was a newlywed. You can imagine what th that was like i was a newlywed love call of duty but had to tend to my other duties too right so i had to really carve out time to play this video game it meant so much to me i love video games but i didn't play any other game more than i played this game Remember those days when people used to suck at Call of Duty and it wasn't cheesy and cheesy stuff wasn't in the game? I mean, we could talk about the noob tube, but hey, the noob tube is the noob tube. Good times. Just so nostalgic when I think about Modern Warfare 2 and when that game dropped, getting my first new generation console ps3 at the time and, and modern warfare 2 was my first game on that console right meant a lot to me it meant a lot to me because now i didn't have to go to a friend's house to play the game um at that time i couldn't afford to buy a system when modern warfare 4 was out i couldn't afford it i was young was extremely young you know what i'm saying barely 20 I, I think i was i think i was probably like 21 22 years old man when that game came out i don't even remember exactly how old i was but it was pretty early right and it meant a lot to me it did it did mean a lot to me and that's the reason why um Taking the time out to say these things to you, Activision, to you, Infinity Ward, especially because you are my favorite publisher of Call of Duty. I know a lot of people 
as you know, they have their differences between the studios, whatever. You know what I'm saying? But I've never lost faith, faith in Infinity Ward. I've never lost faith in them, even when they made Ghost. I mean, unlike a lot of people, I think Ghost is one of the better Call of Duties. I loved playing Ghost. You know, I think the 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 um. You know what I'm saying? The 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 night vision or whatever they call it in the game was a bit OP because it was, you can practically use it on every gun and all people do is just camp. It was a campy call of duty and, the, and the maps were a bit too extra sized. <laughs> if you want to call it that they were big, there were some big maps. And I think that's the biggest complaint that anybody had about it. Because when you're talking about the best um, create a class system in Call of Duty history, everybody goes back to Ghost. Ghost has the best create a class system in a Call of Duty game. I loved it. I loved that game. When it comes on to small uh, to medium maps, that game was the ish you know what i'm saying it was right infinite um infinite warfare at one of the dopest campaigns i ever played even though it was during the 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 boost jumping era you know even even though it was the boost jumping era i still enjoyed that game i played it I played Black Ops 3 and I played Advanced Warfare. Now, Advanced Warfare was a different ball game because I never got any of the good guns in that game. I never I never did. I couldn't I couldn't for 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 the love of the game and I'm not the type of person who spends money on on microtransactions. I don't do that. After I buy your game, for a hundred dollars, cause I drop a hundred dollars on Call of Duty every year, season pass, plus the game. Right, every year. That's what I do. I drop a hundred bones. I don't need collector's edition. I don't need that stuff. So I get season pass. Um, usually I think for digital now it's like the digital deluxe package thing you can get, and you'll get the season pass plus. Plus the game, right? And you get all the DLCs during the year as they come out, right? I think that's how it goes, right? So it's it's just to to me. I want them to really understand that. I know there's a lot of hate coming from the from from the community. There's a lot of love coming to you right now. And the reason why I feel like I need to do this video right now is because this is a critical time for your business. And take it from a guy who's been doing business for a while now. And I know you guys probably are saying, you know, you're you're a big car corporation and you do things how you feel like doing it. I'm telling you, if you don't get this shit right this year, the community We'll probably leave your ass out to dry. I'm just saying that straight up to you right now, Activision. Because not only, not only will you have ruined Call of Duty for pretty much everyone, you will have ruined one of your best in history because you're rebooting something that's very dear to call of duty fans the call of duty community you will be ruining that if you don't get this shit right i'm hearing some good things i'm hearing some good things man i grew up with this franchise man a lot of times when I was super stressed out, it was good to come home and play Call of Duty. Get my mind off of so many stuff. No other game. I don't know 
if it's if it's the shooting, if it's the vibrating of the control. I don't know what the hell it is about this franchise, but it's but anytime I'm super stressed out, I can come home and play some Call of Duty and it will calm my ass down. Right? So this Activision is a love letter to you. It is. It is a love letter. I'm I'm speaking it out loud, but it is a love letter to you guys. I want you guys to succeed because I love Call of Duty that much. I know there's a lot of hate that have come over the years since Advanced Warfare dropped. There's a lot of hate that has been coming to your way instead of love. Now, we're kind of back on track. I love this trailer that I just watched. I love everything that Drifter is saying. Chaos Exilencer is saying. Um, my boy Hollow is saying. I'm loving all of these Call of Duty guys that you guys um, fly out to the studios to get a glimpse of this game. And what they've been reporting, it's really the grittiness that you're talking about. The realness of it. The, 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 the reality you know what I'm saying? It, it's real. And this is where you guys needed to come back to. Is to understand that we, even if you had to, this was the, the situation where you had to reboot and, and bring back the nostalgia feeling. You, you needed to do something and I'm happy that you're doing it. But please do not ruin this game with microtransaction. Please create something that can help you with the business side and also keep the fans happy. There are a lot of videos. There are a lot of videos on YouTube of your the same people that you're flying out to these studios. They have a ton of videos that give you guys suggestions. Because since as you're not going to listen to people like me, and you're not going to listen to, to, to the smaller people in the community, these guys are the influencers that you fly out. Right? Because my video will probably never reach your ear. They have a ton of suggestions, those influencers that you're flying out. That gives you guys suggestions on how you can balance this thing. I will never tell you guys not to make money. That's absolutely ridiculous. Because I've seen YouTubers come on here. And they're being facetious about stuff. And making it seem like Activision is not supposed to make money. I want you guys to make a ton of money. So your company can keep growing. And so that this franchise can keep going. And you can make other games. That are great. I want you guys to succeed. But when it seems like all you care about is the money. That's where the discrepancy comes in. That's where everything goes to crap. That's when the shit hits the fan if you want to say it like that. Right? I want to be as objective as possible because I know... As a company, you guys need to make money. I know that. I'm in business. I have to make money. But I always try to keep my customers happy so they can keep coming back. And your business model right now, it's not working. I don't know if you guys notice that. It's not working. It's just not. That's the point of it all. And I want you guys to succeed. This should be the resurrection of the Call of Duty community. I'm hearing great things. Crossplay. Good. That should have been done a long time ago. We need this game to launch with the things that we want. Leaderboard should be on point. I don't understand why the leaderboards is being sacrificed for what? No campaign? Are you serious? That's what leaderboards are being sacrificed for. No campaign. So that it can be on a 
Call of Duty app. Okay, now you got the app. We still need the leaderboards in the game. I don't, I don't want to have to pick up my phone to look at my stats in Call of Duty. That is absolutely ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. That should have never... The person that suggested that in the boardroom, you should have fired them on the spot. Honestly. Because at this point in time, you should have someone there that is saying, no, we need to pay more attention to what the community is saying because these are the guys that make us rich. When is this going to stop? When are you going to get it? Because I saw what you guys did just now with Black Ops 4 with this new Days of Summer update. That is absolutely ridiculous. I just don't understand how are you guys still doing stuff like this. Why are you guys still doing stuff like this? You think that if you... What are you trying to do, a money grab right now? Because it kind of seems like you're doing a money grab before the new game comes out. It kind of seems that way because you know we don't want weapons in, in supply drops. We already went through that debacle with Black Ops 3 and we didn't like it. You heard how much we love what happened with World War II. You know how much we love that system because it gave us a chance to earn the new weapons. You can buy them, you can buy supply drops, or you can earn them when they drop. What's so wrong with that model? Hmm? Because get what what you guys don't understand is this, Activision. I'm going to show I'm going to tell you guys something man because as I said man this video is going to be long so if if you guys can't take it because I have a lot to say to Activision I'm going to tell you guys something man you see your old school Call of Duty community they're the only ones that's willing to grind these days that's the truth I dare somebody out there to disagree with me. It's only your old school Call of Duty fans from back in the original Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare um, Call of Duty 4, Modern Warfare 2, Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2, right? Those are the people that's still willing to grind. Your new Call of Duty fans that are coming in now all they know about is microtransactions. It's little kids that you're putting all this cheesy ass stuff in the game for. You know what I'm saying? You know, should should I talk about it? The brekkie. You know what I'm saying? Now you got the flashlight shotgun in Black Ops 4. I, I mean, the, 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 the strobe light or whatever you want to call it. I mean, seriously, guys. Those are, those are the people that are going to spend the money. So you don't have to worry... You're going to make money. Money is going to come. You guys don't have to worry about people buying. If you have a model that satisfies both the grinders and the people who are willing to spend the money, you will have a balance. Why can't you understand that? All of these guys that are on YouTube making content, all of them buy the stuff on day one when it releases they're not gonna grind why are they not going to grind because they need the new stuff to create their content people like exclusive ace he needs to get these guns so he can give us the stats to make our gaming experience better with the game he will buy the the the, the, the guns you know they have to in a way, they're forced to buy it. But when the same people, right, are telling you that they don't like your business model, because if they so choose to, cr to grind it out, they can't. 
me let you guys in on a little secret. Black Ops 3, I have every single gun in that game, and I never spent a cent over a hundred dollars. I got the season pass. I got, and that's it. I never spent one dollar. Not even one dollar, because I'm a grinder. So I'll grind it out. I'll get the crypto keys. No problem. I'll grind it out. I played that game for hours. Game for hours. Had a 2.5 KD in that game. Loved it. Loved that game. But the fact that I had to grind it so much to open so many supplies. I must have opened. I don't even know, bro. If I should. I opened so many supply drops in that game. I have every single gun, that, that every single gun, whether it be DLC, I have all the guns. I have all of them that ever released in that game. Every single one. And I never spent a cent. I never spent a cent on supply drops. I grinded out those grand slams, those, um, those triple plays, all of them. I grinded them out, man. Get them 100 wins. Hit the free for all. I grinded it out, man. I'm willing to grind if you are willing to make the grind good, acceptable. I am willing to grind it out. And this is coming from not your fake Call of Duty fans out there. This is coming from a true Call of Duty fan. I'm telling you Activision right now because I know the game ain't gone gold yet. It ain't gone gold yet. Right? And we're I'm telling you, I'm I'm scared. I'm scared because this year, I mean the since Black Ops 4 drop was the first time I ever in the history of Call of Duty considered putting it down. I'm telling you guys the honest truth. It was the first time I considered putting this game down and was like, you know what? As much as I love this franchise, this is not going in the direction I expected. And I thought they would figure somehow to create that balance of business and the community but they can't. And when, even when they do some things right, they end up just doing something else wrong in the process, in the same process. I love the World War II microtransaction um, situation, but no, let's, let, let, let's um, look at what the game turned into after, um, what's his name, when Schofield... And that other guy left. I don't even remember their names. Because they got promoted to Activision. And nothing against them. Nothing against them. But the game got way better after they left. The whole thing was revamped. And I started playing World War II. Started to re to, to, I started to remember what it's like to really play Call of Duty and enjoy it. Because all the guns, all the new guns, you could grind them. Um, I don't even remember what they were called. I loved, I loved the headquarters feature. I mean, those are things that was created by you. You know what I'm saying? Game director, um, whatever his name is, right? And I loved it. And I know a lot of people didn't didn't like World War II. There's a bunch of my friends that you know when i talked to them about call of duty and when when world war ii came out and we all didn't like what was going on the, the game was not ready for launch it was not ready so many problems with the game at launch the system the whole the creator class system sucked but after them two guys left and the new guys stepped in or stepped up Right? Completely revamped the whole system. 
I told my friends, you guys need to hop back on this. And it was a beaut. Beautiful revamp. Right? I'm telling you guys, man. This year can be that year when you get the community back completely on your side. As I said, I'm loving the things I'm hearing, man. I'm I have I haven't heard this much positivity talked about Call of Duty. I have not heard this much positivity towards Call of Duty in a long, long time. And I'm loving it. I'm loving it. So I'm here to tell you guys, man, even though I'm a little bit scared, I think you guys are going to pull it off. I'm really rooting for you guys to pull this off and do it the right way. And to finally create that balance. Finally create that balance that we can all live with, that we can all understand that we can all know that it's it's not just about making the money i know you guys are trying man and that's the thing like i see the little inkling of you guys trying but then you mess it up by doing something else and it's just like man i love this but mm, you know what i'm saying but there's that over there where it's like god I wish that wasn't there. You know what I mean? I'm telling you guys, man, over there at Activision, my heart is really going out to you guys right now because I know there's somebody in in y'all ear, in the investors here, ear, in Infinity Ward's ear, there's somebody there that is trying to make these changes. But there's also somebody there that's like, we need to make this money. And I get it. I have those people in my ear too when it comes on to my business. And I always, as the leader of the pack, I have to find that balance to make everything okay. Because yes, as a company, I need to make money. But on the other hand, if I don't, keep my customers happy if I don't keep the four to five star rating what sense what's the sense of doing business how are they gonna keep coming back and buying my products how are they gonna keep coming back and doing business with me how are other people gonna see me from the outlook you guys don't realize that every single one of your franchises out there right now that has Activision names attached to it is suffering every single one of them there's not a, I mean even Blizzard is coming under fire these days I mean if it wasn't for I, I'm telling you guys right now that if it wasn't for I mean that trash that you put out that was Destiny 2 I mean come on Need I say more? Need I say more? I mean, seriously. What are you guys up to, man? What are you guys up to over there? Please don't ruin this franchise for us Call of Duty lovers, man. Your old school guys, even the new school guys, I'm cheering for them too. Even though I know it's a bunch of kids that don't know what the hell they're thinking and stuff. <laughs> you know? I remember those days when, when you used to have to struggle to learn how to play Call of Duty. And it ain't because kids are getting smarter these days. It's because y'all put too much damn cheese in the game because y'all want the people who are new to the franchise to feel comfortable coming in. I never felt comfortable coming in and I still loved it. They can learn to love the game just the same. Stop babying people. Stop take think and, and that... There's a reason why I feel like this is the year too, man. 
for you guys to really get back in the game, to get back on top and take out Fortnite. This is why I feel like this is the year because you guys, from what I've been hearing, is like you threw everything out the window, including the baby and the bathwater, and said, yo, we coming with it. And we don't care who's upset or whatever controversy. Like when you did no Russian. We don't care. We're going to show you the reality of war. And that's going to be it. And I hope you guys are not listening to these stupid ass news outlets. I hope you guys are not listening to them and start censoring stuff in the game because... If that's the case, if y'all censor this game, a lot of people is going to be upset. Weigh the situation. Don't let the media sway sway y'all decision. It's not going to keep you from making money. It's going to make you more money if you want me to put it on the business level for you. It's going to make you more money. Because the more circulation this game's at, the more and more people are going to want to play it because they're going to be like, oh, this is banned? Oh, let me go see what this is all about. Why is it banned? People are going to go out of their way to get copies of this game because even if it's banned in their country, they're still going to want to play it. They're still going to want to see what is, this, what, what is this about? Why is it banned? Things being banned has never been more wanted in this world. Telling people that they can't have something makes them want it even more. And that's the reason why you should release this game as is. No need to censor anything. I love realism in games. I love when games make me think about shit and not just play with me like I don't have like I don't have a brain in my head. Tell me a story and let me learn something from it. I love that. Okay? I'm well over 40 minutes now. But as I said, man, these are stuff that is... I've been thinking about since this trailer dropped. I've been thinking about this. And it just kind of bubbled over today. And I said, you know what? Let me get this stuff off my chest. And I said, let me talk directly to you guys over there at Activision because I do understand from a corporate corporate standpoint what it's like to deal with balance to having that balance. It's not an easy thing, and that's why I, I, I empathize I empathize, right? It's not easy to have that balance. Right? And never mind my beard. I know I don't look right right now. But I'm growing out my stuff, okay? The woman likes it that way. Stop worrying about it. <laughs> I need a haircut because I know a lot of people going to be like, you in business? Yeah. Yeah, I'm in business. Yeah. So, as I said, man, I would love if you guys, whoever is watching this, to share this, tweet it out, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Because I really do want them to understand that it's not, it's not, I don't feel like it's hate, it's concern that's coming from your fans, the Call of Duty community. It's concern. It's not, it's not hate. It's not hatred, man. You know, so I'm not saying this to make you feel better about making these bad decisions. I'm saying this, that you don't keep making these bad decisions. What you just did with Black Ops War was a bad decision. If you want an example, that's a bad, it, it's just, it's just bad. At this point in Black Ops 4 life cycle, at this point, you should be giving away more free stuff. Not adding stuff that we got to pay for to get. And it's not even anything great that we, you know what I'm saying, that you'll be willing to spend. The only thing that I would probably, you know what I'm saying, buy some COD points to try and get is probably the ballistic knife. 
because everything else just seem moot because I don't really use sniper rifles, so I don't give a crap about that. I might grind out and get and get the wep the weapon bribe, but then I heard that there's a possibility that you could get a Mark II weapon out of this bribe too. That's what I'm saying, man. It's just at this point in the game, you guys should have gotten it, and I don't feel like you get it yet. And I'm hoping that. As I said, man, it just seems like this situation, the Days of Summer thing with Black Ops 4, it just seems like a money grab to me. Because I know what that looks like from a corporate standpoint. I know what it looks like when it comes down to a money grab. Um, as in, let's grab all this money because we're going to change something. And that's why I have hope, but you should not have done it. Because even if some people don't see that coming, because, you know, they're not, they're not knowledgeable enough to see it. And I feel it just, I just, I see the implications of it because you have not been doing this all year in Call of Duty. Why now? Why r the event right after, why the event right after the Call of Duty Modern Warfare trailer drops? Why? Please tell me. Hmm? Anyone? I'll wait. Anyone? Yeah. I've seen this before, man. I see it all the time in business. I've seen it happen multiple times during my time in business. I've seen it. Even if it's not, I could be way off, but it's sure damn, it's a damn well good play. That's all I'm saying. But I want you guys to understand <clears throat> that this is a passion for me. It is a passion. It is a it, it is a pastime. It is a it's something very dear to me. And I do not want you guys to ruin this or just make this the last game and go out with a bang. Because if you can't keep up, if you can't keep up the business model, that's what we do, man. If you wanna if if you if you wanna create um if you wanna create demand, take the take take it off the shelf. <clears throat> take it off the shelf. Um tell you what, that's what um what they call it Warframe does. To give you guys a good example of what Warframe does. Warframe, they take some of their their prime the some of the prime warframes right warframes and put them in a vault put them in a vault so over a time period people start asking what happened to this to this um warframe what happened to this frame what happened to that frame oh they're in the vault they're in the vault they're in the vault so they let some time pass and then they re-release the, the frame again because it was so beastly you get what i'm saying like if y'all should even have a model like that in call of duty it would be so awesome i think that's a model that could be used because there's a lot of games that use that model it's not just warframe so it's not a copywritten anything anybody could do it right if y'all could just take some really good guns like the the acr put them in the vault and let them come out at a certain time, and everybody will be anticipating. Oh, I'm gonna have to grind for this. Some of the legendary guns of Call of Duty. When you're talking about the ACR from Modern Warfare 2, right? The beastly M16 from 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 Modern um, from Call of Duty 4, the first Modern Warfare. Right? When you're gonna talk about legendary guns i know you guys keep bringing back the peacekeeper that's what i'm saying that's a gun you could put in the vault man it's legendary everybody knows about it all true call of duty fans knows the legendary guns knows the guns the command what is it the commander the commander is it a commander or commando i don't, I don't remember exactly but that's a legendary gun from black ops 1 the mp7 from black ops 2 
these guns are guns that you could you keep bringing back guns like the Galil. I'm like, I mean, don't get me wrong, Galil is legendary. And it should be a gun in the vault too. You could put these guns in the vault, man, and release them at a certain point in the life cycle and let it be a grind. Or a community event. You guys love community event, even though you start doing that always at the end of the the the, the 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 um the life cycle of the games. I don't know why you do that. Let it be a grind. These guns, man, let it be a community event. Even if you want to make it 400 million matches played or whatever, it let us grind for it. As a community, you'll get more people to play the game if they know we all got to come together so we all can have this gun. Come on, man. Do I have to sit here and teach you guys about supply and demand? I mean, my God. That was a great idea. As I told you guys, man, this one was going to be a long one, but I got other stuff that I have to do. I just had to get this off of my chest. Um, but I hope that this get somewhat of, a, you know what I'm saying, traction in the community um, of Call of Duty. It's not something I usually do on this channel, but I know there are people, because I've played with a couple of my subscribers um, on Call of Duty um in the past so i know they're call of duty fans on my channel i know so what i would love for you guys to do if you share the same kind of love as i do share it on your twitter you know what i'm saying tweet tweet it out to um to some of the major call of duty. i'm going to be doing the same i'm going to be tweeting it out to them they might not even care whatever the situation is hopefully you know, they talk about it or whatever the situation is. Um, they might disagree with some of my points. Of course, I don't expect everybody to agree with what I'm saying, but I try to remain as objective as possible um, to let Activision understand that this is not coming from a place of hatred, but of, of a place of concern, right? Um, and it's no hate to the, to the, you know, to the influencers that I talked about. There's no hate here. You know, I just feel like you guys should keep uploading Call of Duty content to keep the game relevant because I love this franchise. And that's the reason why I subscribe to your channel. I do not subscribe to your channel to watch you play Fortnite. That's not what I subscribe to your channel for or to watch you play all these Battle Royale games and have nothing to do with Call of Duty. If you're going to play a Battle Royale, you play Blackout. You hear me? You play Blackout. You can try all the other ones, but make sure you come back to what made your channel grow. That was Call of Duty, man. Let's be real about it. Call of Duty is the reason why you have over a million subscribers. It ain't anything else. So let's be real. Okay. So as I said, man, it's no hate <clears throat> towards um, those influencers that I talk about. Um, I just feel like, you know, even to the, to, to a lesser degree, I feel like other, the smaller people, people that are coming up now that are really good at the game and, and, and whatever that they need a voice. And I'm one of those small YouTubers that I feel like could bring some attention and to let Activision understand that this is not, it's not about hate. And I've watched so many videos um, before this, this trailer dropped, I've watched so many videos, you know, and it's just, it's just coming from a place of concern for the franchise because not only do people on YouTube make their bread, you know what I'm saying? Off of this franchise, you know, it's also very, very dear to them. It's very heartfelt when you hear them talk. You know, today, even today, I was watching um, Prestigious Key. Um, I was watching his video about the um, the Days of Summer update. And he was, I've never heard, <laughs> I've never heard Prestigious Key go off like this. Like, I've, I've heard him rant before, but this is the first time I've ever heard him, like, 
he went ballistic in that video. He was really, really, really upset about this update. You know? So, <clears throat> I'm just saying, guys, like, I, I really do wish that this video, I know it's long. <laughs> I know it's very long, <laughs> you know, but it's just, I really needed to get this stuff off my chest. So if you guys could share it, man, it would be awesome. Thank you guys so much, man, for listening, for staying. If you stayed through the whole thing, I really do appreciate it. If you watch this whole thing, I'm not even, I'm not even, I, I probably, this is probably going to be one ad on this because I'm not going to load it up with ads or whatever the situation is. Like, I'm not going to do that. So it's, as I said, man, this is out of a, out of a heart of concern that of how much I love this franchise and what it's meant to me over the years. And I really want them to get that aspect. Not only just, I, I don't want them just to hear about the aspect of, you know, they just need to make a better game and stop doing all this micro tra transaction stuff. I need them to understand from a real, real, real fan you know what I'm saying? Perspective, heartfelt message to them, you know, and not just straight outright just blaming them and upset about what they've been doing. So thank you guys for listening. As always, man, it's been great sitting here getting this stuff off my chest because it really was bothering me. So thank you guys for listening. As always, man, it's Terabyte Reacts. Peace.